In the middle of June 2023, a post came out on Property Industry I deriding Ben Taylor and the Keller Williams model from dis dissatisfied people who took out a license. Today, Ben is joining me on the Watkins sofa to discuss the two issues of is the Keller Williams model uh, the right model for the UK and also the leadership of Keller Williams in the UK. Thank you for joining me today, Ben. You're welcome. I must stress for the record, we're not wishing to get anything personal here and I'm not going to mention any names whatsoever. Um, there seems to be a, a slight, there seems to be a cohort of people in the industry who seem to be gunning for Keller Williams and gunning for, for you in particular. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you some questions about the model itself and you. I'm going to be challenging, yet at the same time, I'm not going to step over the line because I just want to stress for the record is that anyone who sits on the Watkins sofa has full editorial control. So if I ask you questions that step over the line, you're not going to answer them and you're going to take them out, which makes a mockery of the whole thing. And I must stress, ladies and gentlemen, is that I do these videos totally at my own cost as a hobby. So at the end of the day, I've got no axe to ground. Is, is that okay for me to ask you some questions? Listen, I said this to you way back when we, when we agreed to do this. I said, ask, you, ask me whatever you want, right? And that's one thing you'll get from me, Chris, is ask whatever you want and I'll answer it with the most candid, transparent answer I can give you. So you go ahead. Let's look at the model first, if you don't mind me saying. In the UK, there are two predominant USA-based self-employed models that have come over to the UK. One, which is a focus very much on, um, and they're not, they're not shy of their own criticisms either, you know, in terms of it being a, a, been accused of a pyramid scheme because they, they're, they're uh, what am I trying to say is, is that, the people within it are trying to encourage other people in and you're not here to answer that accusation you're a training firm a technology firm who just happens to sell a few houses is that a fair statement are we very good and very focused on training yes are we very focused on technology yes what we are is a business that supports people to go and build their own real estate business it's that's what we are it's interesting you use the word real estate which is a phrase that the vast majority of people watching this wouldn't recognize. And we all know what real estate is, is that one of the criticisms that someone said is, is that you're an American model, but you haven't adopted to the British way. Mm. Is that a fair? So look, uh, I'm not an advocate of saying sticking with stuff that doesn't work, right? So we, in our previous conversations, we've had conversations around the model I'm looking at is um, yes, founded in the US. And by the way, both the businesses, as you've rightly said, they're both founded in the US, in fact. Um, and I look at the US as a far more developed and sophisticated real estate model than the one we have in the UK, i.e. there's more wealth creation for the agents. There's a, um, a, a much greater, higher level of service delivered by real estate agents in America than there is compared to the UK. And that's inarguable. You know, anybody that has actually taken any time to look at what they deliver in the States versus what they do in the UK, it's tremendous. Is that so, because they charge more, which means they can offer more? Because uh, There's people, definitely a relevant part of that. Yeah, because some sure, people yeah. have said that the model can't work because we don't charge enough, or is it chicken and the egg? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So the, but I would say that's the case in, the UK, there there are very uh, huge examples, aren't there, of saying, look, we can go out. If you're if you're selling a home in the UK, if you're the owner of a home in the UK, you will know that you could sell it for a very low upfront fee, right? What's the total market for that type of model? How many? How, what percentage of people well, I mean, say I'll sell my I'm, I'm going to sell my house with a for a cheap upfront fee? Well, I mean, the number one estate agency in terms of is a certain colour between the the 
colors of red and blue, if you mix yeah, them together. Yeah, somewhere in the, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and their market share two years ago was around 4%, and now it's hovering around 2 Okay, so at the peak then... Well, the peak was nearly 5 or 6%. Okay, so let's say it's 5 or 6%. Let's take the peak at 6%, okay? So therefore, 94 people out of every 100, they know that they can sell it cheap and upfront and choose not to. What does that tell you? Right? It means that that's not the driving be behaviour when it comes to selling your home. Why, and again, why has Keller decided to focus on opening market centres? You, know, you, you, you know, why didn't you almost open two or three market centres and actually get them to a state where they become self-fulfilling and they're amazing? Mm. Whilst all of a sudden, you know, um, roll the clock back, you were, you were promising, you were suggesting that there was going to be almost a, a Keller Williams centre, market centre in every town or every big city. I mean, how many, uh, how many do we sit at in today in June 23? The physical centre is seven or eight. Seven or eight. Yeah. Which is way less. Mind you, there's a lot that's happened in the last three years, right? Okay. We launched half our centres, or most of the centres. Do you, do you think you opened too time. many? I don't think that's the right question. I think the one you said at the beginning is a much more important one. What you just said, if I heard you correctly, you said, why didn't you open two or three yes, why didn't and you get two? them, let's call, may I use a term, right? Showcase centres. Yes. Right. Why didn't we do that? Um, I think we'd have been wise to do that. In hindsight, do you think you should have done that? Yeah. I mean, but I will say this, Chris, just like life, right? You, there was no, it wasn't doable. When I came and took the business on, to do that wasn't doable, just to be clear. What but, do you mean doable? Uh, I.e. in practice, the concept of before you launch it, get two or three showcases, absolutely, I think that would have worked a treat. Absolutely worked but a treat. Why wouldn't it, well, it would have worked for them and you might have had a more substantial model and more centres by now? As opposed to what was the what's the most centres you had at one time? Uh, Thirteen. So, without mentioning names, why why have you gone backwards in terms of the number of market centres? Because our our business, right? Let's just first of all get clear about why why have a centre at all, right? Because we believe that to support the agent, a centre is still profoundly important for human beings, right? In terms of, it's a bit like my son at a school. Tri a tribe, a, like a come together. Absolutely. Yeah. The idea that there's a load of other thriving entrepreneurs all working out the same location and have a base. Right? Lots of people say to me, you know, I, 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 um, I started my company working out of my bedroom. Absolutely. When you had enough money, what did you do? I said, oh, I got an office. Why did you get an office? Well, that's where all my team are. Okay. It's a human thing. So a market centre for me, the concept of that, absolutely great for human behaviour because it's a great place to be. Okay. Um, but I've also said that and all of the centres that we launched, right? So you have to remember two things. One, the majority of the centres we launched were within a few months or during COVID. And that, so we didn't have a showcase at the time of going into a very tricky place, particularly for a physical. I mean, I, I had centers that we couldn't visit, right, for months, right? Mm -hmm. And then even once we could, I was saying to somebody the other day, the three times I went into London after COVID and or you're now free to go back into London, I got COVID twice, two out of three, I got COVID. So it's not surprising that people are a bit reluctant to go in. And it's taken time to get that momentum back. But, but the point being is that if you, in a center to, to deliver this model, right? You have to learn to. So for instance, if you're an agent in one of my centers and I haven't learned the systems and models of the business I bought into, I can't teach you them because I don't know them myself. You have to learn those systems and models to be able to deliver those do you, to the people in your business. Do you think there were centers that didn't adopt the Keller way? Oh yeah, absolutely. That didn't, that, that Why didn't was that? run the models. Why was that? Um, because it's very new and when things don't work, if, you, if you're not getting results, right, you can feel that at the time you need to, it's a bit like Waterloo, right? And sometimes you've got to push forward 
Whereas you feel through fear, I'm going to retreat, right? I'm going to go backwards to what I know, as opposed to push through. It's a bit like electric cars and Elon Musk, right? For four years, they're a comedy car. And now, of course, they're a spectacular brand. But had he gone, oh, crack it, maybe, maybe this doesn't work, he'd have fallen backwards. What we have needed to do, Chris, is learn how do we do this really well? Right? So part of that is on the person that buys a franchise to say, I've got to learn how to deliver this. And part of that is also, you know, I have to take responsibility for that and say, what have we learned from our experiences over the last five years of how to do this better? How do we support market center owners? What better? would you do differently? I'd, I'd, you know, yeah, what would you do differently? So I'm, I'm always going to caveat things with, because um, I, mainly I don't tend to look at life as to what would I have done if I'd have had the knowledge then, what I tend to look at with all the learnings I have, I said to my children yesterday, I was with my boys yesterday, and saying to them, there's no loss, you win or you learn, right? There's no loss, it's a win or a learn. Okay, then right? what have you learned? What, but again, I'm gonna have to ask, I'm gonna have to, you know, what would you have done in hindsight with what you've learned? Well, what, what are we doing going forward Go on. as a result of those learnings? So many things, right? So for instance, what we now know on how to launch a center profitably, we now don't announce a center launching for many, many more months until the agent count has got to a certain level. And we help that, we, we have a whole launch program now with a new market center owner. So you won't even hear about it, right? We won't, and in the old days we go, we're opening a new market center, here we go, we go and launch. Now what we do is we literally help them build it all the way through to get to a certain agent count to protect that, that center before we were making those announcements. So what actually do you offer a market center boss to, to enable them that they don't fail? The systems, the tools, the models, and the training. Without mentioning any names, do you feel that some of the people that did close bought, in, bought into the, because you know, you are very evangelical, about this. I've interviewed you a number of times. I hate to, I don't want to use the word fault, but, what, but do you think the response, some of the responsibility of why they failed laid at your feet or do you think they laid at their own feet? Oh, Chris, I spend my entire life taking responsibility, right? So do, will it be, from my perspective, because I can't control what other people's view is, I just look at mine. Are there things that we do better now as a result of those learnings? Absolutely. Why have I done that? Because I've taken responsibility for those as I do in everything in life, right? It doesn't pay me to spend a load of time saying, well, it's 50% your fault and 50% my fault. Don't worry about that. My responsibility is this and that's what I'm doing. And I think that when I look at certain, when I look at our history with certain individuals, um, they very quickly made it clear they weren't going to be successful in running those centers. And if I had time again, I'd have stopped that shorter once we found that out, once we realized that was the case, to protect them and to protect their interests. Because there's no question, just if you're going to leave, and somebody told me this recently, said it can be a very lonely being an innovator, right? In fact, the more ambitious you are, the, and the more you want to do things differently, the more lonely that can become. And I was trying to do something that hasn't been done before, and we've had to learn very quickly how to do that really well. How would you reconcile the impressive success of Keller Williams in other countries that opened at the same time compared to the UK? So, um, and you can appreciate, I spend a lot of time learning with these guys in other countries. One of the things I would say is, that, and, and you, you hit on this as you often do, Chris, at, right at the beginning of this, and you talked about showcase centers. So um, we talk about France quite a bit um, because they're three and a half thousand agents, you know, mm -hmm. grown really rapidly. There's two things France did. One is they had, they organized themselves to have enormous resources right from the beginning. The other thing they did was they built showcase centers right from the start. Um, so they built what they called three showcase laboratories, they called them. And I think that gave them such a strong foundation. And when I came into this business, I owned a very small amount of it. Uh, my other partners were brilliant, but US based. And I think from that starting point, it was gonna be harder. 
So you're almost, the, the UK operation was almost bootstrapped that you had to finance the growth from the income coming in. Is that what you're saying? No, we put an awful lot of money into uh, into growing. And as, I mean, a heck of a lot of money has gone into this to, to be able to grow as fast as we have. But I think um, when, you, when you look at other countries in terms of where they've grown faster, and there, by the way, there aren't masses of those, that, you know, in no. terms of it takes time when you're doing something new. It takes time, right? We've been doing this. You know, people say, well, you've been five years and you've only got this number of centres. I mean, how many people do you have as, as brokers in your organisation at the moment? So I think there's, there's somewhere around 400, 425 of associates. And I think there's about, call it 325 of agents, something like that. Okay. You can appreciate it fluctuates with that. In a previous video, you said that... Um, you were you found that people who weren't estate agents actually quite often made the best estate agents do you i mean would you well think? yeah that's not quite what i said but yes I, I am saying it's certainly not a prerequisite that you have experience yes. to be a great agent that's for sure but you know if someone was watching this and thinking to myself as a self-employed estate agent should i join a market center or not or should i go for another model is you know what would your message be to those well, the same as I would for anything, that, that make sure you make decisions based on knowledge rather than, you know, lots of people that make choices in life where they're, before they've gathered all the facts. So explore both, explore. It, a, it, it, it might not be right for somebody to have a model. Ours is all about, my, our Keller Williams model is about content, right? So there's the books that with the models, the systems that we teach, right? And some people, other models. Some people have said that that you're very uh, focused on it's the Gary Keller way. It's the big red book, and it's if it's not that way, it's not it's the highway. So this is such a you know, Chris. This is such an interesting one, right? Which I must stress to you. I want to just say for the record, I've read that book, and I personally believe it's a great book. That is and not a Keller Williams book, is it? No. It's not a Keller Williams book. It's written That's, by but, Gary. It's written by Gary, right? But the whole point of that book is nothing to do with Keller Williams. It's to do with the fact that this is what the top agents do. That's what it okay. is. These are the models. Is it fair? I mean, some people say, like. I don't want to be sending birthday cards to someone because that's not very British. Or is, it, or is, that, just a, is that just a superfluous throwaway yeah, line? I don't get involved in those conversations. Is it, is it important to consistently communicate with people on your clients in your database and to communicate with them in a regular and systematic fashion absolutely critical if you want to get referral business critical some people have said that you know you're very big at training and support and almost that is you're not an estate agency how would you address that perception what that we're big on training and support mm. So yeah, we are big on training and support. Do you think most estate agents want to be trained and supported? <laughs> Do I think that most people think that they need training and development? No, probably not. Not most. If you look at the self improvement models, right? In the let's say for uh, the Tony Robbins, etc., okay. these teachings are much bigger in other countries than they are in the UK. But growing, Chris. But do you, growing. Do you think that the, probably the issue is is that? In the Keller network, there appears to be two really decent centres, one of which is run by Claire Readings and their team in Essex. What do they do differently that others haven't? Um, they're just further down the road, just to be clear. There's other centres that are on exactly the same pathway, and, and you'll see more and more of those. They're growing nicely, right? There's quite a number of centres that are on that same pathway. What they've done is and and claire is to be clear claire leads that center day to day but there's also is a phenomenal talent in mark reddings that oversees that he's what we call the operating principal of the center and mark's got some you know he was so far ahead of his time in the industry he was he was launching online estate agency well well before purple bricks came on the scene and so on so i think his business sold fourteen thousand houses so what they've done really well is they were and mark and i joke about it they stuck to the model so much more rigor rigorously than anyone else did. What Claire has done, you've seen her videos, right? Look, at what she's really clear on is this is the value 
of being in business with me. Right. I, I interviewed, we've got a couple of agents called Sue and George Rag, lovely people. They operate up in the Leeds area and they're doing so much business. You couldn't convince them that the market's really challenging, Chris, because they've done, they've done more business by the end of May than they did in the entire year last year. And when I was talking to uh, Claire, because they're now, sorry, to uh, Sue, they're now being supported by um, the Plus Market Centre whilst we're building out the Leeds Centre, right? Now, she says that Claire Reddings has made the single biggest difference to their business by ensuring they use the Keller Williams systems and models, right? By making sure that every week they, that Claire makes sure they run the systems and models of the business and it's transformed their business. So they do that so well. So those coming back, those people who have closed the doors or you've had to amalgamate into another center, it is your opinion. I'm distilling down what you said earlier on okay. is that they didn't apply the Keller way, the systems. To be successful, you have to apply the system. Let's phrase it this way around, if I may. That in order for a market center to thrive, i.e. grow the agent count, grow the production, what we call more, the agents to do more business and therefore to improve your profitability, what we know works is running the model. And if you don't do that, it is very challenging. But if you stay in that model space, then you'll have a really nice business. So for instance, if you look at certain market centers, and again, we, we agree, we're not getting into names and, and so on, and we don't want to do that. But our model, Chris, and this is really important, we don't take very much from an agent. The whole idea is that it's built for the agent. So we don't take a lot of money from an agent. Therefore, you have to have a lot of agents. If you've got Eight isn't, or it, nine. Isn't, isn't it in your interest for you for the for the UK firm to open centres up because obviously there's a royalty lump each month. So that's oh, what. No. So, so you you wouldn't open centres because of that. You, you what our business grows by the number of agents and the level of production those agents get into. And you do, you wouldn't want to build the business just by selling franchises because it's frankly you'd end up with the wrong people running centres anyway. So I'm, I, we talk about this a lot, and I'm not trying to be semantical with you, but I don't want to sell a centre to anyone, but we, we, we are very careful who we'll award them to because we've also learnt who are the people that are most likely to thrive in owning one, right? And by the way, we're not talking about good or bad people. We're just talking about the right people. That's all. Let's move on and talk about your leadership. Do you think you could have done anything differently with regard to your leadership of Keller in the last five to two? Yeah, I think, um, again, anybody that's not open to criticism, Chris, how do you grow? You know, let's say, for instance, I'm going to say, no, everything I'm doing is spot on. What kind of arrogance would that take? It's pretty extreme, right? Are there things that I've learned on this journey and some of them really painful learnings? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, I'm very fortunate. My chairman worked for Richard Branson for, for 20 years, okay. right? And so he's, I've learned so much from being in business with him. His name's Simon Wright. Great, great guy. But when, when we, when often we would talk about, I just to be clear, I don't know Richard Branson. I'm just nope. referring. So I don't like that whole name dropping thing, but I'm saying that he worked with Richard all that time. And when with Richard, he's amazing at setting a vision. He's amazing at recruiting people into that vision is then making sure they've got the resources to deliver that and then get out of the way. Can I do? I think I'm very strong on vision, Chris. Very strong on that. What about action? I think we've done lots of very good things, but I think that ensuring we get more resources to ensure that we have the, the so is that action. So is that a lack of money coming in? It's people and money, yeah. Talking of people, you've you've... You've brought a lot of people in into Keller over the years who probably only lasted 12 months. I'm not talking about franchisees or license holders or market centers and they, and, and they subsequently left. Without mentioning names, did they not get the vision or was it something else? Uh, Chris, we, we've got over 400 people in business, right? If I brought in some people and they didn't work out, that's bringing 
that's, you're bringing 400 people, right? If you and I sat there and said, well, you're going to start a company and you get to 400 people in the next five years. I'm not years, talking about brokers. I'm talking about senior people at head office. Yeah, but that's a, it, it's, a, it's bringing in large numbers of people. Will, if you're going to bring in hundreds of people, will you get some of them right and some of them wrong? Absolutely. And have I, have I hired some of the wrong people? Yeah, I have. But I've also hired a lot of really the right people. So there's a mixture. And each time you do this, can you get better at understanding who do you need and what do you need? Absolutely. In the article on Property Industry Eye, there was talking of a disconnect between market centres owners and their concerns about the, the, the direction of Keller. What would your comment be on that? I think um, we have a real, let's, let's put it as nice as possible. Is there a real disconnect with, honestly, one or two people? Yeah, not very many, but one or two people that actually bought a franchise it didn't work out for them for a whole multitude of reasons let's keep a sense of it's not masses it's a small number of people and um are there things that we could do better could have done better yes are there things they could do better absolutely and were most of those signs fairly early on yes and have we changed our process of bringing people in and selecting those people as a result of that yes we have what steps are you taking to ensure transparency in future misunderstandings with regard to centre orders? So this is a good one. We've actually, I'm, I'm shifting it once again to another level in that I'm, anything you want to do at scale, you need a system. So what I've done is I've put a system in place to gain more direct feedback from agents, from leaders in market centres and ultimately from the owners of market centers so that they have we have a more systematic approach to how do we help you build your business faster better i mean have you taken someone on in a more executive role to actually do the, the nitty-gritty stuff that a ceo probably shouldn't be doing well look, i can tell you this that we're in the process of a restructure right now in fact it's fairly obvious we're in the process of a restructure right now that you'll see some significant changes as, in order to execute on that vision more effectively. Do you think you've been wearing too many hats of being evangelical, forward thinking, and not necessarily, you know, at the moment, if you don't mind me saying, you're probably wearing a CEO hat and an MD's hat, and you almost need an MD to almost do the, the not the dirty work, but the grind of it. So there's a book called The One Thing, um, again, written by Gary, um, it's not a Keller Williams book, it's just a, yeah, and, and it's about focusing on one thing. And one of my very dear friends and business partners, she put something in place a while ago called Operation Simplify. Um, it's very difficult, Chris, to compete well with somebody that's laser focused on one thing. Even if you're really talented, if you've got multiple things you're putting your energy into, it's much harder. Because right? you, you've been setting up, you've been, you know, you've been setting up market centres, you've been investing in them, you've been setting up tech firms and lots of other different things. Do you think in hindsight you should have just been more focused on, right, let's get five or six centres done and make them great? Yeah, I would say that the best thing I could do, that when you talk about technology and, and all of those, anything that's directly there to support an agent that's what uh, that's the right thing for me to be putting the time and energy into right so the kw uh, uk the entire value proposition that's where all my energy and focus goes these days and slowly over time what i'm doing is relinquishing in i mean i've sold a number of businesses or shut businesses that simply for my time back so that i can just put my energy into because it's like i said to you very tough to beat somebody who's razor focused and won't give up so what I've been doing with my life is simplifying that to say, we believe, I genuinely believe that what Keller Williams can do all around the world, we literally are changing people's lives. And in the UK, I believe in it so profoundly that I'm, I'm, I'm put more and more of my own money in, more and more of my commitment in to make sure, because I want to see this through to make sure that what we can deliver, we do deliver, because I can see us, I can see how many people we're changing their lives for, and we have to do that in a better fashion. And one of the ways that I can do that is do less 
of all the periphery stuff so that we can focus in on doing the thing that I'm really good at. And here's the other bit, Chris, and get out of the way. There are people that are really good at certain things, way better than me. Make sure I get out of their way and let them do Do you think you've got in the way to. too often in the Sorry? Place? Do you think you've got in the way too often? Um, I think I'm, I wouldn't phrase it that way, but am I in the way too much sometimes? Yeah, for sure. Um, and what specific actions are you going to take to address the challenges faced by the existing Keller Williams Market Centre bosses? Well, we're in a good shape with, with we've, we've gone to uh, great lengths, painful lengths over recent times to make sure that we've got alignment and synergy and cultural alignment, values alignment with the people we're in business with. So we've got a core group of those people. So we're in a good space now. And we're, what I'm now doing is making sure that we've got the resources, we've got the right people, and we've got the right structures to ensure that we can take this to the level that we knew that the business could get to. Do you genuinely believe that Keller Williams will be here in 12 and five years time, 12 months time and five years time? Yeah, Chris, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if I didn't believe in it. I'd go and do something else, you know. I'm you... doing this because it's absolutely, it's a great model. Um, thank you for your time today, Ben. Uh, we've just spent just over half an hour. To some people watching this, I probably wouldn't have been as challenging as they thought they would, but I said at the start I was going to be challenging but not go over the line. And I won't apologise to you guys and girls out there because, as I said, I do this as a hobby. But that, that post was quite damning. Um, what would your message be, not to any individual, but to someone who feels that they've been involved with Keller Williams and they've come out with a bad taste? What would your message be to those people as a whole? As a whole, if somebody's experienced, I'm here, Chris, not just in Keller Williams, but in my life, I'm here to try and help people have a better life. So if somebody's got involved in a business that I own or run and their experience isn't great, then I'm, I'm, I've, I probably feel that far more than anybody else because I only want to have positive experiences on people. Do I accept that in the world of people starting their own business, if they go out and do it and they fail, um, do, I ex do I now accept that a lot of people are going to point the finger at the leader of that business, of course they will. And will some of those people point the finger and say, you should have done these things better. And I might think, I agree with that. I should have done some of those things better. But that won't be the sole part of it, right? All I look at is what am I responsible for? And what I want to try and do is I want to build a business where everybody wants to join it and no one wants to leave it. Now you might say, well, you'll never do that then. I know, but it's a, pretty good get, it's a pretty good goal. And if I keep getting better at making this something that everybody wants to join, and I keep getting better at making sure that actually he's taking away the reasons we want to leave, well, then everybody wins. And that's what I'm going to stay true to. It's what I was true to at the beginning. It's what I'm true to all the way through. And I'm not going to change that process. Thank you for your time today. Great to see you, Chris.